Welcome again to Grace Believers Bible Study. I want to thank Scott for the first service. Very good, very good. Uh, we want. We got some prayer requests. Uh, Carl told me that Teresa. I don't. What's her last name? Do you know? Morgan. Morgan. Teresa Morgan and her son just tested. Was it this morning or yesterday? This morning tested positive for COVID. They've been here before, so we need prayer for her. Deanna Pennock. She uh, hurt herself. I guess she was in the beauty shop and got up and fell somehow. And uh, Carl and I visited her yesterday. Took her a little scooter which you can put your knee on. And so she can get around. She can't walk. She don't know if her toes broke or her foot's broke. But we looked at it, and it looked pretty rough, to be honest with you. But the good thing, it came out of it. So we need to be praying for her. Amen. Absolutely. She's part of this group. And uh, But I got an opportunity yesterday to, she introduced me to one of her friends that lives there. And uh, the lady, very nice person. And, uh, of course, we talked about the Bible. I said, where do you go to church? She said, I'm a member of Olive Baptist. And I said, well, you know, the pastor over there does not know the gospel. And I give her the gospel. But uh, she li- I said, look, we don't, we don't re- really get around and start talking about uh, different stories, you know, like the normal pastors do. They'll, they'll talk about a story for 40, if they get an opportunity. They've got about 20 minutes to preach. And then they'll use a couple of scriptures, and they'll tell you a story to make you feel good, so you think you've done your the God's work that day, so you can leave. Yep. And uh, she said, "I like the stories." Well, like the stories, but uh, what are you getting out of it? What are you getting fed? You're really not getting anything. But anyway, her name is Marilyn. We'd be praying for her to to trust Christ as her Lord and Savior. She, like most everybody else, thinks they're saved. They're called lost believers. Hopefully, you're not one of them. A lost believer. Yeah, past tense, I was also. But let's be praying for them. I want to leave you with some of these things here. I'm going to read you this. Be thankful for today. Because in one moment, your entire life could change. And I'm telling you, that's a fact. I didn't know that car wreck was going to mess up my back. I don't know what happened to Gil, but he's got some back problems and it, it, it probably was great one day, and the next day, it's bad. I mean, it's just be thankful for the moment and the day you're involved in, Amen. no matter where you've been. I've got a couple more I want to read. Very simple, if I can find them again. Very simple. The last oh, that ain't person. it. <laughs> this is another one I want you to take heed to. Be good to people. For no reason. You know, I know some people right now who are saved. They're kind and good to people, but they got a reason. Have no reason just to be good to people. I got one more, and then I'm going to start on the service, okay? Purgatory. <clears throat> Purgatory is another gospel of Satan. No repentance after death, is there? No. It gives me how the Catholicism, they'll put you down there and they'll charge your family mm-hmm. money to pray your loved one out of purgatory. That, that's about, <clears throat> if I can think of it, that's probably about the worst religion in the entire world. They're all bad. <clears throat> but Catholicism, that's just horrible. Yeah, purgatory. Anyway, be kind to people now, guys. <clears throat> now we're going to get started. I'm going to rehash some of this, and uh, it's called What's to You. This is part three of What's to You. You know, a lot of times we don't, uh, we don't uh, really cover what was to Peter and so forth, but we need to, and that's what we've been doing for two weeks, a little bit of Paul. But what we're trying to do is separate it. Would you bow your heads in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for the the knowledge that we have to share uh, from the Scriptures, only from the Scriptures when it comes to salvation. We just thank you for Jesus Christ coming into this world that you sent to die for our sins, all of our sins, past, present, and future sins. Thank you for the the, the Scriptures that specifically like Romans 520 where grace did abound, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Thank you, Father, for not holding anything against us. You paid the whole penalty through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey. All we have to do is just trust him. And through you, 
we give you all the praise in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to go to, uh, I covered, uh, like Scott, I'm going to bring up a few scriptures that we covered last week to get you into the swing of things and the mode. Uh, and you don't have to go here. I, I'm just going to cover it real quick, and then we're going to get started on today. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 3, 1, 13, it says, I want you to listen to this carefully. This is what Peter was preaching. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope, hope to the end. What is the end? The end of your life or until the end of the tribulation. Hope to the end for the grace that is, that's future, that is to be brought unto you. When? At the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what it says. It's explicit. How can you mess that up? <clears throat> it's crazy. That's not for us. Think about it. Now, I know what a preterist is. I don't know if you know, but a preterist believes that, that the second coming has already taken place. Oh, yeah, I've got a friend that's that way. I've got a book that she sent me so I could read so I could understand how it done already took place. <laughs> oh, but sec get it through your mind, the second coming has not happened yet. Amen. If it has, we all missed the rapture. Now, but years later, when Peter was preaching, long after the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, we find that Israel has fallen. Well, it did, didn't it? But what was Peter preaching? Peter was preaching the rise of Israel, the restitution of Israel, the restored kingdom to Israel. That's what Peter was preaching. He was looking forward to that kingdom of heaven on earth. Didn't happen. But what did that depend upon? It depended upon Israel repenting and acknowledging Jesus Christ as their king. They didn't. They did not. Individual repentance. It required individual repentance for those Jews, and it also required that uh, national repentance happen with the nation of Israel for the kingdom, the kingdom to come, the kingdom of heaven. Didn't happen. From the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top. That's what it took. Everybody, okay? The elders, the chief priest, the leadership of that nation of Israel did not, I want to emphasize it again, did not repent, and the kingdom of heaven did not come. Did not come. So what happened? Israel fell. And through the fall of Israel, what happened? Salvation came unto us right here. Salvation came unto the Gentiles. But it didn't come at first. We were the ungodly Gentiles. Amen. Romans 11, 11 says, I say then, have they stumbled, they as being Israel, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them, Israel, to jealousy. Amen. So God's prophetic program that Peter preached was interrupted. Scott was alluding to, we're not in the Old Testament, we're not in the New Testament, we're in a time period called the mystery. It's not in the scriptures at all prior to the Apostle Paul. Something different happened, didn't it? What happened? Everything that happened in the early part of the book of Acts was a foreshadowing of something yet to come. That kingdom's going to be set up. It just didn't happen yet. What is that? The 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ. Millennial reign, 1,000 years. Now, what was Peter preaching? The fulfillment of prophecy. Now, he talks about these days, and we're going to be looking at some scriptures in Acts 3, 24. Let's take a look at it. Acts 3, 24. In Acts 3.24, the scripture says, Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. What is these days? Prophetic days, things that's, for, that's going to happen in the future. So all the prophets, as many as have spoken, foretold of a coming time of what? We don't have it now. What is it? Peace on earth. There is no peace on this earth. You may have peace with God when you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have the peace of God, but there is no peace in this world. 
They told of a time, those prophets, they told of a time when the, the desert, the desert over there would blossom as the rose. Can you imagine the desert blossoming as a rose? Go to Isaiah 35. Let's look. We're going to get into something. In verse 1 of Isaiah 35. This is future. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert, that's something I just didn't say, the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Woo wee Let me look at this, see if I want to go here. Does that mean the whole world will be a desert? No. Before it ends, that's all. Nope. That's <laughs> they told of a time when the earth would be full full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let's go to this little hid book called Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. Use your index, guys. Oh, we're going we're gonna to disturb some of the dust. It's right after Micah. Did that help? No, it's right after Nahum. <laughs> Habakkuk 2 14 now you got to I'm just going to tell you this it's over in verse 2 so I, and the Lord answered me Habakkuk and said I just wanted you to know who said this that's all in verse 14 for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea Wow, that's pretty good, ain't it? Let's go to Isaiah. And I'll probably hit this scripture a couple of times today. Isaiah chapter 11, I believe that's where I want to go. I've got to look it up. Let <laughs> me I don't know if I want to go there yet. I don't think I'm going to go there yet. The, uh, so let's go to Acts chapter 2. We're going to Isaiah 9, 11, 9 in a minute, okay? It's just for a, you just got to see a different context. In Acts chapter 2, let's look. This has nothing to do with me and you as far as salvation goes. Peter is being the one who's talking here. But you need to know what's to him, what's to us, what's not to us as far as direct salvation. Everything in the Bible is for our learning and our admonition. But Acts chapter 2, we know what took place at Pentecost, right? So I want to start in, 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 in verse 4 of Acts chapter 2. And they, we're going to see who they were down further. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, gave them utterance. And they were, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. I can imagine being there. Holy mackerel. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all, those, all these which speak Galileans? So they were wondering, all oh, these are Galileans. How can they speak in all these different languages? It was the utterance of the Holy Spirit that gave them that. And how hear we ever man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya around Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. I don't see any Gentiles. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. <laughs> A little early to be drinking. But Peter 
standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, you men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. That's nine o'clock in the morning. Nine o'clock in the morning, the third hour. The Jewish day starts at 6 a.m., just so you'll know it was the third hour, okay? We're getting somewhere. Verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, let's take a look at Joel. Let's go see what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Joel chapter 2. Are y'all searching for these things? It's quiet. <laughs> it should be right after Hosea, if that helps, because we're going to go to Hosea in a minute, just to get ready for it. Joel chapter 2. I want to start in verse 28. And it shall come to pass, are you there? And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your, and, and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Well, that was what was happening in Acts chapter 2. That's what's happening in Acts chapter 2. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. That's not the same as the day of Christ. It's the day of the Lord. Now, this is what, go to verse 32. And this is not for us. I want you to see. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. You call on the name of, can you call on the name of the Lord today and be saved? Hey. No, you can't. You can call, it ain't going to help, because you don't know the Lord. Remember, the Lord does not hear an unsaved or an unrighteous person's prayer. He cannot have any communication with you whatsoever, not until you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, I want us to go to Matthew 24. Remember what it just said in verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, etc., etc. Let's go and see what Matthew wrote in one of the Gospels. This is a synoptic Gospel. Matthew 24. And a lot of people who don't know the difference think this is the rapture. You would never even know the rapture was in the Scriptures if it hadn't have been for the Apostle Paul. That's one of the mysteries. So it's not back over here in the, the Gospels. Matthew 24. I want to start in verse... Well, let me see where I want to start. I'm just going to start here in verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation, after the tribulation, get it, ma'am, of the seven years that we're going to talk about later, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Well, we're not going to see that while we're here on this earth. That's not to us. And the moon shall not give her light. The, the moon's going out. I guess sometimes when there's a, what do you call that? Eclipse. Eclipse. People get scared and think this is it. And the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, there's a couple of things. Stars from heaven. It depends on the context. Stars from heaven is literally here, stars from heaven. In Revelation, stars from heaven are angels. So you've got to see the context of what's being talked about. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. It's going to be bad, guys. 
Now I want you to look around in your life every day walking around. Do you see the effect of God's Spirit poured out on all flesh? It ain't happening. It hasn't happened. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 39. Because people don't realize that they just think of us as flesh. Verse 39, 1 Corinthians 15. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there's one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. So there's all kind of, it includes all flesh. But you don't see anything happening. I don't see God's wrath pouring out on anybody, on all flesh. Do you? No. Wolves have flesh. Lambs have flesh. No. You notice any wolves and lambs dwelling together? Not really. So you know that. You know that isn't not true. God's Spirit is not being poured out on all flesh. But it will. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Always gets me, and I tell you, every time I cover that scripture about fishes, my English teacher said, and she was brilliant. I didn't particularly care for her, but she was brilliant. And uh, there ain't no such word as fishes. There is. It's fish, singular and plural, she says. Isaiah 11, verse 6. This is what's going to happen. This is what Peter was preaching. This is Isaiah, one of the prophets. The wolf shall dwell with a lamb. I don't see it happening. So people say this has already happened. They're crazy. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. That's the goat. And the calf and the young lion. That's a, a young lion. What is that? That's a cub and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. You're going to let your little baby lead them? No, you're not. Just try it at the zoo. That animal's going to eat your child up. I am telling you it's going to happen. Woo and, verse 7, and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones, let me, and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Can you imagine a lion eating straw? No, sir. No. Well, can you imagine Nebuchadnezzar eating grass? The Bible said he did it, as Scott said, for seven years. He grazed like a cow, a human being. Yes, he did. You either believe everything in the Bible or don't believe any of it. Amen. Verse 8, and the, sucking, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass. That's a snake. And the wean child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Ain't nothing going to happen to them. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. We already seen some of that waters covering the sea. Wow, I'm telling you, it's going to get bad. I don't see any of this happening today, and neither do you. Neither do you. Let's go over to Acts chapter 2. We're just getting started. Acts chapter 2. Peter knew all these things. Acts chapter 2. Verse 18. The Bible says, And on my service and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Prophesy. That's divine revelation. They get directly from the Holy Spirit. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. We just read that. In Matthew 24, Peter's re-emphasizing this. We've already saw where it said that in Joel. Since Peter spoke those words, 
have any of these things happened? No, not one. We're not in prophecy. Nothing that you can see taking place outside has anything to do with what Paul says. It's not happening in this dispensation of the grace of God. You know, some people, some people, they, they claim they see signs and wonders. If they see signs and wonders, it could be of Satan. Because God's not showing you signs and wonders today. They claim that the vapors of smoke, you ever seen these, you know, you ride along and all of a sudden it looks like the whole elements is on fire. Some people get scared at that. I remember one day when I was driving in, I, I, was, I was headed out of Cocoa, Florida into Cocoa Beach and there, there's Ron Johns over here if you know what I'm talking about, and there's the ocean. And there's the biggest sun I've ever seen sitting down. I thought, this is it. This is it. Of course, I was lost. I was 1974. I said, this is it. The world's coming to an end. It's a blood moon. I mean, uh, whatever. Yeah, it was a moon. I'm sorry. It was a blood moon. It wasn't a sun. It was a blood moon. Holy mackerel. I was scared to death. You ain't got to I didn't know anything. You ain't got to worry about that. You're not going to see that. Amen. There's a guy around here who's preaching all these blood moons, and it's, it's time to happen and all this kind of stuff. You know what I'm talking about. It ain't going to happen. Scared me to death, man. <laughs> Acts 2.20, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. It's going to happen before the day of the Lord. The fact is, absolutely none of these things has happened and it's not happening now. Anybody that puts you in prophecy doesn't have a clue. I don't care how many times he's read the Bible, how many times he's preached, and how many souls he claimed he saved. Amen. We're not soul winners, and we don't save anybody. Amen. Paul planted, Apollos watered, and God giveth the increase. We don't. Amen. Just the way the Bible says it. I know. But we're going to get to that. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's right. Uh -oh. So what happened on the day of Pentecost is the foreshadowing of what? A yet future event. It's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. Now, it's true with anybody. Anybody who will believe on, your, on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, believing he is the Son of God, believing that he died on the cross for that person's sins, you've got to make it personal. The Bible says for our sins, you've got to make it personal. And was raised again for their justification. Guess what? They're saved. But how are they saved? By grace through faith. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. It's through faith. Amen. Keep that in mind, because we're going to get something here. It's through faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is. Nothing you can do about it. You can't add to it, and you better not take away from it. Because in the book of Revelation, it says, Anybody that adds to or takes away the plagues of this book is going to be placed upon you. Now, but see, that's not what Peter preached in Acts chapter 2. I'm talking about grace through faith. He didn't preach that. Why? He didn't know that. You can't preach something you don't know. Peter believed in something, and this is true. They, they, these Jews, they knew all about what the prophet said. They had to, about five years old, start learning. They, they read them every day, every Sunday in the synagogue. So Peter believed in the 70th week of Daniel. He sure did. He believed in the tribulation. That's the seven-year tribulation. He believed the tribulation was coming, and he believed in the coming of the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. He absolutely believed it. And after that, what did he believe in? The second coming of Christ, in which all Israel shall be saved, shall be saved. He believed in a future day of atonement. Right now, he preached remission of sins in Acts 2.38. We don't have remission of sins. They had remission of sins. We know in Romans 3.25, it talks about Jesus Christ being the propitiation for the remission of sins. That wasn't ours. We don't have remission of sins. We have an atonement according to what? Romans 5.11. We now have our atonement. We're at one with God 
in Christ. Can't take it away. Future day of atonement. That's what Peter believed in, okay? And he knew this. He knew, according to Matthew 24, 13, that he had to endure until the end of his life or until the second coming. Because see, at the end of his life, dead men can't sin anymore. It's over. Now, in Romans, let's see. But see, Paul says this. Now, you've got to get back to your apostle. Paul tells you the exact same thing in a way. Let's take a look. In Romans eleven twenty six. Paul wrote this epistle. It's called a pre-prison epistle. Romans eleven twenty six. I'm hot up here. <laughs> oh, y'all may get cold back there. Romans eleven twenty six. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. But Peter said that. He sure did. Then shall, there, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer. Who is, where's Zion? Jerusalem. The deliverer, who is that? The Lord Jesus Christ. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Verse 27, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Their sins will be taken away. It sure will be. So Peter believed in a literal kingdom of heaven upon this earth. We don't. We're going to cover that. Jesus Christ as a king, that's what he believed, ruling and reigning on the throne of David, his father, over the whole house of Israel and all the earth. You heard that. Over the whole house of Israel. We're going to get to this about the northern and southern kingdom. But he believed that because that was what his ministry was. And that was his message. That's what he believed. He preached what he was given as Jesus Christ walked around down here on the face of the earth. We don't follow what Jesus Christ said. We don't follow after the... 2 Corinthians 5, 16. We do not follow any man after the flesh, even though we've known Christ in the flesh. And we know from Romans 15, 8, it says Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Not us. Definitely not us. Now, all those people that Peter preached to, a lot of them, to and who believed his message were in Christ redemptively. Remember three weeks ago we started off with in Christ? Being in Christ is not the same as being in the body of Christ. They're in Christ redemptively. You know, relating to redemption and resulting in redemption is what they're waiting for. But they were not in Christ positionally. That's the difference. That's our position. Once you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're in Christ positionally. That's your position. Your everyday walking around condition in the flesh is horrible. It's sinful. It's stench. Wretched. Evil. Despicable. That's what we are in the flesh. I don't care how many times you bathe. It has nothing to do with that. The only way you can get cleansed is trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb and you are as white as snow in God's eyes. Now, Peter believed in the imminent coming, second coming of Jesus Christ. He knew he was going to come, second coming. Never heard anything about the rapture, though. Peter knew not one iota about it. So Paul, Peter is quoting the prophecy of the book of Joel over in Acts 2. We done read it as if he expects the Lord to come in a short time and probably in his own life. Well, Paul believed that Jesus may be coming in his for the rapture to get us out of here. And then he realized in 2 Timothy, he said, oh, it ain't going to happen. I've run my course. And he turns it over to Timothy and others. I think it's happening here. I think we're going to see it. Maybe not. Maybe just like both of those. It might not happen. But I'm going to cover something later on, maybe to hopefully. Probably won't do it today. Maybe next week. That's going to show you something. Now, what remains? What remains of the prophetic timetable outlined in the book of Daniel? What is it? It's the 70 weeks of Daniel. There's only just one week left of seven years. 
483 years has already been accomplished. This is a judgment upon Israel for disobedience. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Uh, yes, sir. Luke wrote Acts, right? Yes, he did. He sure did. He wrote the book of Luke, and he wrote the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, I want to go to verse 6. When they, they is the apostles with Peter, therefore were come together, they asked of him, Jesus, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times are the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. You don't need to know that. Hold on here and go over to Matthew 24. I'm coming right back to Acts. Matthew 24. In verse 35, I think I'll start there. 2435, heaven and earth shall pass away, Christ said, but my word shall not pass away. Verse 36, this is where I wanted to go. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Only. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. In verse 1, he says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. You don't even need to know. And I'm not going to read any further on that one. But back over to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts 1, 8. Are you getting to go from verse to verse? Are you getting some practice? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But ye shall receive power. He told those 11 at this point. They were only 11 apostles. Because Judas had been, he was dead. He committed suicide. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Guess what? It didn't happen. The kingdom did not come. The coming of Jesus and the setting up of the kingdom, king, kingdom depended upon something. What? Repentance of Israel. And Israel did not repent and they have not repented since. As a matter of fact, Israel is cast away. Ooh. Israel, you can go on over to Hosea chapter 1. Israel nationally is low am I. They're not God's people right now. Israel is not. And Hosea. right side of Daniel, guys. Hosea chapter 1. Verse 9. Then God said, Call his name, that child, lo am I. For it means, for you are not my people. He's talking to the Jews. They're not his people. And I will not be their God. He divorced them. Verse 10, yet the number of the children of Israel, this is future, shall, pardon? That's Hosea chapter 1, verse 9. I'm going to verse 10 now. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. My God, how many is that? Which cannot be measured, <laughs> it tells you that. Nor numbered, and it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. That's at the valley of Jezreel. 
There it shall be said unto them, You are the sons of the living God. Where's that going to take place at? Go to chapter 2. It's going to happen again. He's bringing them back. <coughs> chapter 2, verse 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, you saw where that was at in Hosea 1, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. He's going to marry them again, because they are the bride of Christ. Amen. You're not. I can't believe these people get this so wrong. You cannot bless Israel today because Israel, the Israel of the Bible, does not exist today. I don't care what the United Nations said in 47 and 48, 1947 and 48. They set up a nation over there. That's not the Israel of God. That's the Israel of a little country. But that's not it. Why? It's, it's cast away. It's scattered throughout the world among the nations. Blindness has happened to national Israel for a reason. Let's go to Romans 11. Romans 11, 25. Are you there? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit. That, this is it, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Listen, blindness in part. All the Jews in this dispensation here are not blinded. That's why the gospel of the grace of God, they can trust this same gospel that you've trusted. Amen. All of them are not blinded. It says, let's read it again. And see, it blindness in part. It didn't say all. In part is happened to Israel. And it tells you when, until the fullness of the Gentiles. What does that mean? The fullness of the Gentiles. We're in this dispensation of the grace of God. We preach Jesus Christ crucified for our sins, buried and resurrected for our justification. When the last member is saved into the body of Christ, that's the fullness of the Gentiles. That's not the times of the Gentiles. There's a different thing. The fullness of the Gentiles. It's going to fill up. This dispensation of the grace of God is going to fill up. The rapture takes place. We're out of here. Hmm. God interrupted his dealings with Israel, and he interrupted for a reason. His plans weren't interrupted. No, 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 no. His plans didn't change. His plans happened before the foundation of the world. So it wasn't no plan B or C or D or anything like that. It's, this is exactly how it was planned. It's always been God's plan to do something. What? Save Israel. He knew he was going to save them. Those are his children. God's people. So all Israel shall be saved. And we've done read that in Romans. Well, we haven't. Let me read it. 11, Romans 11, 26. You read it, didn't you, Scott? Oh, I did? I'm going to read it again. Verse 26. And so all Israel, all that's left alive, shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And as Scott said, there's going to be one, it's going to be two-thirds of the population of this world die. Die. It's got roughly eight billion people. Calculate two-thirds of that. That's how many people is going to die. Yes, sir. A lot more than COVID, right? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit. Let's go to Jeremiah 31, would you? Very good. Oh, yeah. You can't go wrong when the crowd's behind you unless you teach a false gospel, which is in all these churches. Verse 31, Jeremiah 31. Behold, 
The days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob, Judah. Now, I got, hold on right there. I, let me look at this other scripture. I, I, I'm going to see if that works. 40. I am. Hold on right there where you at. Because I'm going to come back to verse 32. But it, and, uh, I want you to go to Jeremiah 32, verse 40. This is a new covenant that God has promised. Verse 40, Jeremiah 32, And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. I'm looking for another one, guys. I've got to find out if this is going to work. I ain't through with Jeremiah yet. Let's go to Isaiah. Hold on to Jeremiah 31. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, 2. I'm sorry, 55, 3. The Bible says, Incline your ear and come unto me. He's talking to the Jews now, not you. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Back over to Jeremiah 31. Yeah. Verse 32. I'm going to read verse 31 to lead back into it. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they will be my people. Whoa. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord? For they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive, listen, I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. That's, we're talking about that's what the New Testament is going to be like. We ain't in it, guys. We're not in it. So God's not dealing with Israel today. You, can you see why? Because they're not God's people. He's not dealing with any nation today. People think America is the nation that God blessed. Nope. He's dealing with people like you and me. People listening on the video. Individual people. Salvation will come to Israel when what? Israel repents. When Israel acknowledges their offense. Now, I won't tell you. Let's go to Hosea chapter 5. Hosea chapter 5, verse 14. Now, Hosea chapter 5, verse 14. For I will be unto Ephraim. That's Israel. That's the northern kingdom when they split. Do you know who the first king of Israel was? Saul. Who was the second king of Israel? David. David was born in 1035, roughly, and died in, I, let me, I got it written down. Let's see what it is. 970 B.C. Who took over? Solomon, he took over at that time period in 970. Actually, it didn't happen. Just, they had a split. 
Israel and Judah split into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom after Solomon died. Okay? So that's what we're talking about. For I will be unto Ephraim, Israel, as a lion and as a young cub, as a young lion, which is a cub, to the house of Judah in the southern kingdom. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away and none shall rescue him. It's verse 16. I will go and return to my place. Where is that at? Heaven. Till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction they will seek In their affliction they will seek me early. Look, the, Israel is not going to be set up over there until they go in through this tribulation. They've got to go through affliction, which is the judgment on Israel. Hosea chapter 6. That's where we're going, Joseph. I know you're waiting for that. I've got five minutes. I don't know if I can handle that. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come, and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. Verse 2. After two days he will revive us. The third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Two days. Listen to her. In Genesis chapter 1, I ain't going to go over and read it. It talks about in the first day something happened, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth day. Now we do know, according to, I got it written, 2 Peter 3, 8. A day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Now we know in Genesis 1, those were 24-hour days. So you've got a different uh, definition for a day. So we're talking about right here in Hosea chapter 6, verse 2, two days is 2,000 years. Now, if, if people say that creation started in 4,004 B.C. Okay, to the cross. Jesus Christ came on the scene. He was crucified. 29 A.D. So that's 2,000 years from this point to where we're at today. We know 2,000 years from that date, based upon Hosea chapter 6, verse 2. But the next jubilee, the way it's planned with Israel, is in 2029. 20, we know the tribulation is one week left. We got seven years of that. That's 2022. 20, well, that's pretty close. The calendar's off. But how much is it off? I believe it's very, very close. These two years, huh? When it happens, it doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen. You just get it through your mind. It's going to happen. Your body's going to be changed like a just glorious body. Why? Because you're complete in Christ. If you're not complete, you're lost. It says in 8.1, he says, Romans 8, Therefore there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And that's mine, Dave. Amen. I know yours is Romans 12. I beseech you therefore by the what? Yep. Now, there are some of these so-called people over in Israel over there called Jews fighting over the land today. There's always, always been a trickling of people floating into that land over there who call themselves Jews. Returning to the land, I hear that all the time. There's always been a Zionist movement. Zionist movement? Zion? Jerusalem? Yeah. Movement back. It's always been on three fronts, though. Economic, political, and religious. Three fronts. But they're not returning to the Lord. Uh-uh. No. As I said a few minutes ago, only in affliction will that happen. 
And when is that affliction? It's in the tribulation. Then they're going to be looking. They're going to be good. Oh, I guarantee you. So don't worry about setting a stage and getting all these prophecy preachers up and you know, all the players and looking. And, and we can see some things because we're, we're close. We're in the last days. I mean, last times here. Yeah, we are. There ain't no doubt about it. But there's not, again, I'm going to emphasize this. There's not one single prophecy in the Bible that's being completed at all in this age we're living in. Nowhere in the Middle East, nowhere in the world. Prophecy is fulfilled when every word has come to pass. It's just like the prophecies of Jesus Christ. All 300 of those prophecies were fulfilled because he did it. It's got to be fulfilled before, and it come to pass before it's real. Now, again, God's not dealing with Israel today whatsoever. Who's he dealing with? The body of Christ. And if you haven't trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I ain't talking about lip service, head knowledge. I'm talking about heart knowledge. You need to trust Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You might not have another breath in you before the end of the day. It's not to scare you. It's just reality. Do you want everlasting life or do you want everlasting condemnation? It's your choice. Free choice. Free will. Trust Christ. Died for all your sins. Was buried and resurrected from the dead on the third day for your justification. And that's what I have for you today, and we'll continue next week.